What's going on guys? Uh, it's another day. Just finishing up some stuff. The weather's been beautiful. I got a chance to paint the, uh, the plow that I made a mount for on my John Deere. And I'm working on another project. Uh, this is a, a set of forks. And I bought them as three point forks and I adapted them in another video to uh, work with my quick hitch. And I never ended up making that video because the content just wasn't very good. But uh, this is basically how that looked. But the problem is down here, somebody adapted them to like a cat one hitch and they're too tall to use with my quick hitch. Um, you can see that these positively lock in, which is nice. So as you can see, there was kind of just like a late night, get it done quick and dirty project because I needed to move a, uh, an axle for a guy that was coming and I wanted those forks to do it. But I'll show you what I'm working with now. All right. So I bought these forks off a guy that I know. They were originally uh, forklift forks and it looks like they had broken and been re-welded here. So I actually got them pretty cheap. Now they had been set up with pins uh, here or you could put pins in them up here, which is I think where the original hooks were if you look at the way they're built. But these pins did not line up with my three-way hitch so what I used I used them for a little bit is hooking this in the top hook on my tractor and then just letting this ride against the quick hitch and then that wasn't enough for lifting heavy stuff so I ended up welding this on these are stubs of um, three inch C channel just with some heavy wall tubing to, to connect to my quick hitch and as you can see um, I scabbed those on just from the outside only and I never even came back in and welded them on the inside so they're not super strong. I hadn't really intended them to be like a forever solution when I did it. The other wrinkle to this particular set of forks is that someone welded this headache rack at a three inch channel. And then they also welded a surprisingly nice lift eye that triangulates back down to the middle of the forks. And it's, it's all very heavy wall tubing. The lifting eye is really nice. All the welds are really good. Someone knew what they were doing that did it but I have no idea how much weight that could handle. Um, I don't have any burning need for a lift eye. There's situations where I could see myself wanting one, but um, that's all gonna get cut off today. Um, we're gonna keep the headache rack because I think that's useful, but everything forward of that I, is just extra. So if you watched my last video, you saw me make this frame so that I could use these pins. These are called pins and hooks. It's a quick attach that John Deere uses for their tractors. Um, it worked really, really well for swapping this plow out for that bucket. And what we're gonna do today is I got a second set of those and I want to use those to connect this forks, the forks that I got here to my, my quick tack loader. So um, I got a couple different pieces of steel that we could use to make that happen. I'm gonna have to cut off these mounts that someone had used for a larger tractor and these uh, these would be like a category one they're going to get ground and knocked off the sledge i'm probably going to have to get the um the torches out to clean some of this up i think that would be the fastest way but i want to be careful not to nick the forks so let me flip this up and i can show you some of the other things we'll have to do this is the plate that i'm using it's very heavy plate um, and I think I'm just going to cut a piece to cover um, to cover the both the pins and the hooks on each side and then um, let me drop this down out of the way and then down here this is the angle that I've left over from the plow project everything's a mess because I use my snow plow to plow up everything so this is really uh, Really heavy wall. I can't remember what I said it was in the last video. Um, three eighths, maybe. Maybe not quite three eighths. Um, it could be like five, sorry, five sixteenths. But I feel like if you look at the design of the commercial ones, I'm not an engineer, but there's probably a reason that they create that horizontal um, reinforcement with that plate. So since we have it up here, I may end up adding this down here to the bottom. But I think the first thing I'm gonna do is cut those plates out and 
then I'll worry about see how everything fits together. So we'll uh, we'll get to work grinding this stuff off. Um, we'll get the plate cut. I think I'm just going to cut it with the torch because this is such thick plate. Um, cutting it with the torch is a little trickier. It takes a little more time to set it up. I like to clamp an angle to it to get a nice straight cut. But we'll uh, we'll get to work on that, and we'll see <laughs> once once we get it halfway done, we'll see how we're going to finish it. All right, so I think this cut's turned out pretty good. I don't have to clean up this existing cut because it's rusty kerf here. We got Charlie inspecting the work. We got doggo cam on Charlie, so we'll see how that works. You gonna go get it? Oh. There you go, Charlie. You gonna get it? You gonna get it? cutting edge movie making technology here but uh we cleaned up the forks and uh i'm gonna have to start getting the forks up in position and getting these plates on there and we'll see how everything fits together so you'll see that next so this is kind of what i had in mind for the plates uh they are just a trapezoidal shape that way they can capture both those pins at the bottom and the hooks at the top and I actually, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I have this leftover piece of angle here. And I, I've pretty much decided I want to run that the entire way across the bottom to give that, that kind of horizontal reinforcement that I had talked about earlier. And again, I have it. I can't think of any reason not to. I think it'll stiffen everything up. It'll stiffen up the forks at the bottom. It won't rely entirely on the boom. Um, but the downside of that is then I'd have to weld the pins to that thinner metal. And um, really, if you think about the way the forks should work, is you have weight pushing down on the tips, pulling down on these hooks. That's why they are so thick. And then the pins, this is secured just with a... Uh, with a cotter pin and the reason is because this is the weight bearing surface it's, that's that's cantilevering when the, when weight is applied to the tips it's cantilevering down off the hooks pushing down on this this is just holding it in place so i think it should be okay next step is cutting this angle to the right length and then i'll probably start on welding everything up and 
I also still need to cut the top off. I may still use the torch for that, I'm not sure. It'd be nice to use the grinder with a cutoff wheel just to get some nice clean cuts since I'm planning on reusing this headache rack. All right, guys. Sometimes I feel like this is a theme. It was a beautiful day when I started this project and it's completely overcast. It's starting to rain. So I'm not gonna be able to finish this right now. Um, if I cleaned out the shop, I probably have enough room to bring the forks in, but it's really messy right now, unfortunately. Um, stuff piled up in front of the door. So I think this is how I'm gonna set this up. Um, I'm gonna have to bevel. Uh, I'm gonna clean up all this kerf from the, the torch cut and bevel that. And hopefully I'll be able to get a decent bead on these. These forks are just a little warped. So I think I'm gonna weld this side in. And then this is, is uh, you know, that, was, that, that side was welded right here, you can kind of see. So I think I'm gonna weld this side in and use like a chain or a binder back to the tractor to kind of flex the whole thing back in place, which is another reason I don't wanna try and do this inside. Um, so once I get that corner welded back in and at the angle that I want it um, Then I'll flip that plate up and weld that side in uh, Looking at this You know, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and weld that pin into this I think that'll be strong enough and then we can weld this plate into that angle. So I think that's we're not gonna have any issues with that. That's really strong so uh, I'm gonna do what I can now before it starts pouring down rain Production. All right, guys. Uh, we got the uh, pins welded up in that bottom piece of angle iron, and that looks nice. Raindrops are starting to fall on my head, so we'll get back to work on this later today if uh, the weather allows it. Otherwise, I'll pick it back up when I get a chance. So really, the only thing left to do is uh, bevel these plates, weld them on the forks, and then weld the whole thing to the, uh, to the hooks and the pins now. So it's, uh, it's getting there. All right, well, that's probably it for now. All right, guys, this is the second day of this build. It's actually the third or fourth day. It's just been super, super rainy here in West Virginia. There's a lot of flooding down the southern part of the state. Um, thankfully, not really an issue where I am, but uh, keep strong, carry on if you're down there in the uh, southern floodplains. Uh, so it's a nice day out today, so we're back to work. If you watched my converting a category zero three point uh, box blade to one category one, um, I burned up my old trusty uh, DeWalt angle grinder. It was a seven amp lock on switch, four and a half inch, but it'll take five inch discs. I had that thing for about three years. So I went out and bought a $130 Milwaukee 11 amp. Um, paddle switch it had a lock on option for the paddle switch the last uh the last video on the forklift forks it was starting to make bearing sounds like it was already eating up the bearings in the head it was grinding real bad so i i'd only had it uh two weeks so I took it back to home depot and i exchanged it for what i've had the whole time which is a seven amp dewalt um lock on switch but this is going to get this project done i'm sure i'm confident in it the last one i had lasted me three years um the, the Milwaukee lasted uh, two weeks before it was already starting to go. So to me, that's just useless. So we'll see what we can do with this. So at hand today, we got the forks sitting on that piece of angle that we watered our pins to last time. I went ahead and set a tractor weight on it because this fork is just a little tweaked. Now, interestingly, cutting off that big top uh, lifting eye instantly, like it snapped when it popped. It kind of popped when it when it came off. I think that was tweaked. 
and that was actually holding this in a bind so you can see the forks are a lot more level than they were before but the idea is i'm going to weld this to that angle the forks are very thick the angle's not um it's, it's not that's not going to be the primary means of attaching it but it's going to hold everything in place and then we're going to come back in put our um put our hooks on put our plates in and then we're going to weld all of that up and because the plates are a closer um, thickness to that, once we bevel those down and clean up those torch cut edges, we should have nice strong welds. And I'm gonna try and come through. So um, once I do this, I'm gonna take those plates over to the, the uh, bench grinder. I'm gonna clean them up and bevel them a little bit. And then I'm gonna try and, um, and weld stitches. Instead of welding that continuous, I wanna leave a gap. That way if one of those welds ever cracked, the crack wouldn't go all the way through the weld and fail. Um, it's just something we'll have to keep an eye on. This tractor, I believe, is rated to lift, um, I think, six or 700 pounds on the bucket. And it's, it's max a weight to, to its peak lift is like 350 pounds. It's, I think it's in that range. So these forks aren't going to be used on a Heister forklift lifting 2,000 pounds. Um, if they were, you know, we wouldn't want ones that had been repaired. I really wouldn't want to weld on them a whole lot. But I think for what I want to do with them, they'll be perfect. And I already have them, and they were really cheap to acquire to start with. So, all right. Having said all the safety disclosures, let's get to work. Uh, the bench grinder just wasn't up to the task. I ended up using my big seven inch rigid grinder um, That thing is a real bear to work And it gets everything all covered in dust, but it does remove a lot of material in a hurry So this is basically what we're left with here um, That one's still kind of hot. I just finished grinding it, but you can see how these are going to fit um, the only thing left to do is just clean up some of this surface rust with the small grinder. We'll, we'll clean up some of the rust down there and then we're going to weld everything up. But as you can see that that side's welded and that side's good. This side I did not weld because this side of the fork is not touching this angle and this is why. This is your other side. Yeah, I can fit my entire finger over there. So what we're gonna have to do is get uh, like a binder or a ratchet strap and um, pull this side back down uh, before we weld everything up. All right, well that seems to have taken care of the problem pull this weight off and see how they look Whoa. um you know there's still just a little bit of a bow but it's a lot better than it was before so i think that'll be enough to actually get under palace now we just got to take this binder off and see where she stands All right, guys, it looks like my battery died there. I really hope that you guys got to see some of the welding stuff, kind of the whole point of this project. So you can see on the on the bottom, this is pretty much how I want it. It's just three little caterpillars of weld there that's holding that on. 
Um, this is going to get just seam welded the entire height of it because that's the primary strength of this. Um, the pins we welded yesterday, so they're good. They got a nice bead on them. And then the top of the hooks, I went ahead and welded that and I just put a couple tacks on the side. But the whole idea of this setup now is everything is tacked together. I can drop this down to the ground. I can weld everything horizontal. And everybody says, if you're welding horizontal, then you ain't MIG welding and all that. But uh, I'm going to weld in a way that's comfortable for me in a way that allows me to get the absolute best fusion that I can of these metals because I think this is important to be strong. And I think, uh, I think it's gonna be really strong. I was looking at the way the factory did the bucket hooks and they have them wrapped around welded and then they put a little cap plate on it. So I may do that. Um, and that will give me a little spot to mount a couple hooks later on if I wanna put hooks on this. Um, but yeah, the, the next step on this is gonna be welding this plate up this welder just got a pretty serious workout just doing these. It's going to be slow, slow going with that welder on this. Um, just because this is such thick material, it's really pushing what that thing is capable of doing. And let's see. You can see the difference in thickness of the material. I wish I had thicker material. This is as thick of a plate as I have to work with. And I think it's going to be plenty thick enough. So... I mean, that's, that's a really thick plate. This is what the, this is actually an old road plate. Um, so you could drive a truck over that. Anyway, Charlie's had enough of me working. He wants to throw his ball some. So I think we're going to take a break. We're going to let that water cool down a little bit. And we'll get back to this in a few minutes. Hopefully finish this up today. I'll find out All right, guys, he just saw me uh, use the torch to blast a hole in the fork. Uh, it gives me a spot to put this little ball, which makes it really easy to move, especially all the little trailers I have around. That's why this is only inch and seven eighths. It'll fit under the coupler of any of the trailers I got, but the little ones, is the, they're the nicest ones to move around with this. Because they're a pain in the butt to move with the truck, like my little fuel trailer that you saw in that earlier video. Anyway, the forks are done, except for paint. Um, I got, I'm pretty sure this is strong enough, like, I'm not going to take chances with stuff, but, um, I did what you saw me weld in that extra little piece of plate. Everything is just really burned in about as best as I can burn it in. Um, I got these plates welded front and back with individual seams. That's still got heat coming off of it from how hot the, the welds were. So you can see that's. That's burned in even better on the back than it is on the front. Probably because it, it still had a little residual heat from welding the front. So that's I'm very happy with how it's turned out. I think it looks really good. Um, it's nice having that headache rack, even if it's a little on the tall side. Um, I could see this getting cut down in the future. That would knock an extra, I don't know, 30, 40 pounds of weight off of it. Um, still give you that short one, but if I ever wanted to pick up tall stuff it's kind of nice to have that because it's so easy with this tractor to tilt that loader back and uh dump stuff on the hood 
somebody had already done it when I bought it. I did it once with a set of tires I had in the bucket since I've had it. So very easy to do. All right, well, let's, uh, let's hook this thing up uh, and see what it'll do. I've got a couple jobs I want to try it on. So first impression of the forks is that they work awesome. Um, I was moving these beams around like they weren't even there. I have pretty good visibility of everything. I kind of like having the tall mast because not only does it keep anything from falling back on the tractor, but it uh, gives me a visual indicator of where the forks are. So this, I should have done this a long time ago. This is awesome. I did throw an extra 200 pounds of weight on the, uh, on that box blade that's on the back of the tractor just to have a little more counterbalance. Uh, you can definitely feel it when you got some weight out in front. I haven't tried anything daring like picking up more than one beam yet, but we'll probably get there. I'm going to bring this, uh, bring the forks back over to the driveway and try and get some paint on them. And we're going to call this project done. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, uh, click subscribe. Doing this kind of stuff like every week lately, it seems like. The weather's been holding out pretty well for these kind of projects, and I have so much stuff to get done. So, anyway. Uh, see you guys on the next video. We got more work to do All right, what's up guys we finished up everything uh, My son and I just painted these gloss black with rust-oleum paint just kind of make them look better than that rusty color So this project I will consider it a smashing success so far I'll update my channel if I have any failures with this, but I don't think I will. It turned out great. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content. I'm going to close out with a short drone video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.